Hello everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Adora Uzoma. I'm a Nigerian YouTuber based in London, Ontario, Canada. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to apply for your Canadian study permit. Yes, you guys, it is not hard. It is pretty easy. It is pretty straightforward. I've figured that a lot of people have been trying to come to Canada recently as international students. So why not? I mean, why not show you guys how to apply for your student visa? <laughs> So if you're someone who is very much interested in this type of video, do stick around um, and you'll find out that I also did explain every session of the application. So I wish you all the best in your application. I hope that um, you're able to come to Canada um, when the time is ripe. And without much further ado, let's get right into the video. Bye. Okay guys, we're going to dive right into the application process. So on your web browser, just search for cic.gc.ca and this brings you to Government of Canada website. Um, it says here Immigration and Citizenship. Canada has two official languages, English and French. So we're going to click on English and this brings you to the home page. So we're going to go to the menu bar. Uh, the drop down arrow you're going to see immigration and citizenship and we'll just go right into study which is the purpose of this video so it says here study in canada as an international student apply to study in canada as an international student extend your study permit and find out about working while you study or after you graduate so for the purpose of this video we're just going to apply for a study permit so once we scroll down, we'll just click right at um, get a study permit. And this brings you to all the six processes about the process, who can apply, what documents you have to provide, how to apply after you apply and how you prepare for your arrival. Exciting. Okay, so keep in mind that the application fee is $150, $150 Canadian dollars, okay? And the processing time varies by country. So if you want to know more about that, if you just click on this um, question mark here, it's going to let you know um, what it's based on, but we're not going to go right into that right now. Um, if you have time, you can go through all this, but um, that's not what we're going to do today. Okay, so scrolling down, we'll just go to next, who can apply. And then uh, it gives you the eligibility requirements. So the first one says before you even begin to apply for a study permit, you have to make sure that you're already enrolled at a designated learning institution. So you have to make sure that you've gotten an admission letter or acceptance letter from a designated learning institution. So like I said in my uh, previous video, I'm going to put a link um, on the screen. You have to ensure that you're not enrolled at any school. It has to be a designated learning institution. That video gives, I mentioned why this is very important. So make sure that the school that you're applying to is a DLI. Otherwise, if you're thinking of staying back or you want to work after studies, then um, you wouldn't qualify if you're not enrolled at a designated learning institution. Okay. So the second uh, requirement is to prove you have enough money to pay for your tuition fees, living expenses for yourself and any family members who come with you to Canada and return transportation for yourself and any family member who come with you to Canada. So if you're coming by yourself, make sure that you have enough living expenses for yourself. If you have a family member that is coming alongside with you, you have to make sure that you both, or if you get that more than two, have enough living expenses for yourself. Okay, so ensure that you have a satisfactory police certificate. It says here if required. Um, trust me, this is required um, when coming to Canada or when applying for a study permit. You definitely need a police certificate with no criminal record. So that is required. I don't know why it's saying here if required. Also, you have to ensure that you're in good health. Um, you're going to go through a medical examination. 
it is required it is not if required it is actually required and then you have to prove to an officer that you will leave Canada when your study permit expires so this is very very important in your letter of explanation make sure that you actually say I will leave Canada after I'm done with my studies if you don't mention that your chances of getting a study permit will be very slim so make sure that you actually mention that in your letter of explanation that after you're done with your studies you're going back to your home country okay so moving forward so this just tells you your responsibility as a student all that you need to know um, at your spare time you can go through all that information but I don't want to make this video too long so we're just going to go right into um, how to get the right documents and what you need okay so you need a proof of a proof of acceptance so this is an admission letter or a an acceptance letter you also need proof of identity so maybe your passport or any um, government issued ID well definitely has to be your passport and then proof of financial support so this basically says um, how you're going to be able to take care of yourself when you arrive Canada your living expenses your medical expenses all that here will be proof of financial support I can make a different video about this to elaborate what this entails but this is your required documents to apply for a study permit and then it also says here you may also need a letter of explanation this is you trying to convince the visa officer why you chose Canada as a place of study in your letter of explanation you also have to mention why you chose a specific program as well and do not forget to mention that you'll be leaving Canada after your studies so a letter of explanation is has to be very detailed then it also says here um, this is for those that are going to Quebec this is a acceptance letter and then it says this is for minors so if you're a minor you need a custodian declaration and then other documents so yeah so this is your required documents for a study permit and then we will move forward okay yeah like I said see proof of financial support um, you have to make sure that um, you have to provide like bank statements for the past four months um, proof of your tuition paid and housing fees um, if someone is sponsoring you you have a letter from that person um, proof of funding paid from within Canada if you have scholarship etc so if you have time you can go through all this information here everything is actually on this website for you to go through and digest and yep yeah, so if you're outside Quebec um, if you're the student so it says here if you're the one coming to Canada amounts of funds required per year this is ten thousand dollars which does not even include tuition okay so ten thousand dollars plus whatever your tuition is is what you require to prove as your source of funds for a whole year as a student if you're coming with a family member so that will be fourteen thousand so ten thousand plus four thousand and um, plus tuition so this gives you all the breakdown as to you know proof of financial support when coming to canada um so yeah and then this is if you're going to the province of quebec this applies to you as well so you can go through all that letter of explanation so this talks about why you want to study to, in Canada and it also makes sure that you understand your responsibilities as a student okay alrighty so let's move on and how to apply okay how to apply alrighty so So it says here, um, these are the instructions. Answer a few questions to get the next step with situation. Where are you applying from? So we're gonna click on outside Canada. How do you want to apply? It says here online or paper, but the recommended um, 
way to apply is online so we'll go with that and it says here apply online from outside Canada so make sure that you have a scanner or a camera to create electronic copies of your documents also make sure that you have a valid credit or debit card okay read out the instructions guide that is the link for that and then know the fees um, processing fees for you and anyone you include on your application this has to do with your biometrics as well so these are like accompanying accompanying fees in regards to your application so for your biometrics um, medical exams police certificates language testing if required all these are like extra fees that you might have to pay when applying for a study permit and then we are going to go ahead and create an account or sign in so we'll click on that okay so there are two ways to um to sign in but because we don't have an account we're assuming that we don't even have an account so we're going to go ahead and register so don't have an account register okay so it says here register with gc key or a signing partner so this signing partner is if you're in Canada and you already have like a Canadian banking information, then you can go with this second option. But, um, oops, what happened? Yep. So, but because we don't have a Canadian banking information, we're going to go with uh, GC key. Okay. So register. Alrighty. So. We're going to go ahead and register. Oh, this is sign in. Give me one second here. So sign up. So these are the terms and conditions and I accept. And then, yep, create your username. So we're going to create a username. Um, hmm. We're gonna just say information Canada just find something and just say and continue oh okay <laughs> the username you have said is not available so let's find something here um, I'm just trying to like put in something random info Canada 19 or oh, sorry 2021 just something random and then this is a checklist so make sure that all these checklists are complete and then continue so you just go ahead and create a password So when creating a password, make sure that everything matches before you proceed. So continue. And then you're just going to ask here for um, recovery questions, just in case you forget your password. All these are like recovery questions. So I'll just pick in something, just something random here. Where do you go for your honeymoon? None. <laughs> most memorable person um, mom mom most memorable dates Alrighty, so it says here you have successfully created your GC account or your GC key. Your username is Info Canada 2021 and continue. Okay, so terms and conditions and just click on I accept. And yep, so you go ahead and create your account. It's pretty easy, pretty straightforward. So just put in your name. Um, oops. <laughs> um, info. Canada 
Um, just something random. Yeah, I'm just using like a dummy like email. This is not like a real email. So, um, English continue. So quick, quick security questions. I'm just putting like random stuff. How are you? Fine. How do you do? Good. How old are you? Five. <laughs> um, where are you from? So don't put this second question that I'm putting, I'm just putting like random questions just um, just so that you guys can have an idea of what to put in, but I mean, you don't have to put like, how are you fine, <laughs> it's just like for the purpose of this video. Um, where are you from? Let's we'll go with Nigeria and continue. Okay, alrighty, so we're going to go right into um, applying to come to Canada. And here is going to ask for a personal reference code, which we do not have. So we're just going to go right ahead to determine our eligibility to apply online. So we'll just go right and click on this first option. So we see here visa, visitors visa, study and or work permit. So we're going to click on this because we're applying for a study permit. So just a few questions uh, which we have to try to answer to the best of our ability. Please make sure that all the information you're providing is correct and accurate. Um, so here it says, what would you like to start to do in Canada? Study. How long are you planning to stay in Canada? So if you're studying, um, if you're doing a bachelor's degree or a master's degree or a postgraduate degree, it's definitely going to be more than six months. Um, so we're just going to go here and click on temporarily more than six months. Select the code. Select the code that matches the one on your passport. So we will look for Nigeria. Ninja. We Ninja now. And okay, I can't even see. Yep. So Nigeria, N G A. All right. So what is your current country of residence? So where are you currently applying for this application? If you're presently in Canada, you should select Canada, but let's assume that we are all outside Canada. So we'll just go ahead and select Nigeria. There we go. Do you have a family member who is a Canadian citizen or a permanent resident and is 18 years or older? Nope. If you do have, then click on yes, um, but we're just going to just say no for this video. And then what is your date of birth? Just select something random, 20, 2007, October 19. Next. Are you a lawful permanent resident of the United States with a valid US citizenship and immigration services number? Um, nope. Next. Have you been accepted to a designated learning institution? Yes. So before you even begin to apply for a study permit, you ought to have gotten your acceptance letter. Okay. Next. What is your marital status? So if you're um, married, separated, divorced, whatever that applies to you, um, go ahead and click on that. So I'm just going to say married, never married or single. What is your province of destination? So where is your school located? What province is your school located? Is it in Alberta or Manitoba or Nova Scotia or Prince Edward Island? So wherever your school is located is where, what you're going to select. So I'm just going to put Ontario next and find out if you're eligible to apply. Are you currently or will you be living in Canada with a parent or legal guardian for the entire period of your stay? If you are, say yes. If you're not, say no. So I'm just going to say no. Next. Please try to be honest as possible. And then it says here you may be eligible to come to Canada as a student. Yay. 
so continue <laughs> it says we're almost done or we're almost there so we're just gonna ask a few more questions and we we'll just go to continue do you have a valid work permit or study permit um, we'll just say no next are you an exchange student nope is work an essential component of your studies so it, it this depends on your offer letter if your program requires you to do like an internship um, then you would say yes um, so it all depends on the type of program that you're applying to or that you you're getting or you're, you're looking forward to so if is if, if work is an essential component then go ahead and say yes if it's not say no so all this depends on you know the course you're pursuing so I'm just gonna say no are you a spouse common law partner or child of certain skilled worker blah 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 um, I'm just gonna say no because I already said I was single right um, so this is this is this area here is for like scholarship students are you a recipient of a Commonwealth scholarship or a recipient of a full bursary covering all your expenses um, so are you participants in a Canadian aid program for developing countries so just say no okay and then are you accompanying a family member that has status in Canada or has recently been approved to come to Canada if this is your situation say yes if not say no next have you ever committed or been arrested for been charged with or convicted of any criminal offense in any country no nope. have you had a medical exam performed by an IROCC authorized panel physician within the last 12 months um, if you have say yes if you have not say no um, so next have you visited or lived in any one of the designated countries for six consecutive months in the last year so it's going to show you all the designated countries here so if you have lived in all these countries then i mean okay it's trying to let me exit so i'm just going to cancel so if you have um you say yes if you have not say no so no do you want to submit an application for a family member nope are you living are you giving someone access to your application so if you're doing this application yourself you click on no if you have a representative um, that is going to apply on your behalf then you can click on yes if you're granting authorization for IRCC to release, to release the application to another person so whatever applies to you um, but if you're doing this yourself just go ahead and click on no okay there are fees with this application will you be paying your fees or are you fee exempt so just say I'll be paying for my fees next are you able to make digital copy of your documents with a scanner or camera so make sure that you have either of the two available so just say yes next we'll be paying your application fees online to pay please make sure to use a credit card which is visa mastercard american express etc um so if you're using a debit card then it has to be any of this so yes okay and then this screen here is just for you to review all the information that you've put in make sure that everything is correct cross check double check do all all that good stuff uh, make sure that all the information that you, you put in is correct if it's good to go then go ahead and click on continue and then this just gives you all the step-by-step -step approach um, step one use your account save your application upload your documents and finally pay your fees oops then continue okay so this is like the nitty-gritty of it all so this is the application form um, so because we haven't uploaded anything yet it's still saying not provided so once you click on this so this is like a link you have to click on it so once you click on this it's going to download the PDF form which you can auto fill 
it's going to ask you all the questions make sure that you have a recent adobe um just so that you can be able to fill it out save it to your computer and then upload it here okay so this is the actual study permits form application for study permits made outside of canada this is the form once you click on this it's going to bring out the whole document for you to fill out save and then upload okay and then these are like your supporting documents um so this is what this is your best certificate um, make sure that it's so these are all required so everything here is required so once you have your best certificate you upload letter of acceptance which is your admission letter from the from the designated learning institution that you you apply to upload your acceptance letter or admission letter your passport is required upload that here um custodian decl declaration upload that as well proof of financial support upload that digital photo so make sure that is the right pixel make sure that is the right format make sure that everything is in sync um and upload that here um family information required so if you if you're like it is going to request form for your spouse or common law partner your parents children your stepchildren your siblings if you have half siblings all that information um so this is like actually a form you click on this upload fill out the information save it to your computer and then you upload it here okay so yeah make sure that all that is all that is in place then there are optional documents this is not even essential it's just it's optional but your application form is the main one these are your supporting documents which are all required every single thing here is required and then your fees so the study permits application fee is 150 dollars and there's going to be a payment screen here for you to go right ahead and pay it's going to ask for your credit card or your debit card uh, make sure that you put in the right card so once that goes through they're going to send you a notification that your application has been submitted if you haven't had enough time to fill out all these documents um, if you just come here it says here can I save my application and return to complete it later uh, yes you can um, so keep in mind that you have 60 days to submit your online application if you do not submit your application within 60 days it will be automatically deleted and then you have to start afresh again to apply for a study permit so once you create a profile you have about 60 days to submit and how do i upload my documents this gives you all that information make sure that the maximum size for each file is four megabytes um, and these are the files that are accepted pdf jpg and docs all you see all that information here um, my documents are too large to upload how do i reduce this file it gives you all that information here so this application is pretty straightforward it's pretty easy um, just take your time make sure that you have all the required documents needed and yeah so you can always go back um, to your e-application and you see here where it says in progress then you can continue from where you, wherever you stopped um, so just make sure that everything is done within 60 days so yeah i wish you all the best good luck in your application good luck in your admission process is an exciting journey and i hope that everyone who intends to come to canada to study you know gets what they are looking for so if you do have some video suggestions for me do let me know in the comment section below thank you so much for tuning in um if you know anyone who needs this video even if it's not for you if you know like a family friend or a friend or a stranger do share this video with them is very and highly informative this information i'm just giving it out for free a lot of people collect money to do this so if it's something that you can just take your time and submit and fill out the form read out the information read all the information so yeah um you will save yourself cost 
so thank you so much for tuning in and please do subscribe if you haven't subscribed yet and yep i will see you guys in my next video bye